So uh, first up to talk about this, we have Mark Skapnis. He's the Director of Systems Engineering at Intel, uh, a company I know is interested in uh, increasing its presence in the mobile world. Please welcome Mark Skapnis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second Tizen Developer Conference. We've got some great things to tell you this morning about Tizen and the work that we've all been doing, but before we get started, I thought I'd share a little story with you that reminds me why we're doing Tizen and what it's all about. So I have a daughter, Anna, you can see her picture up here, uh, she's five and a half now, but I remember really well when she was about two, she got a hold of my smartphone and she immediately figured out how to use it, how to navigate back and forth using the touch screen, how to find the apps she wanted and launch them. And from that moment on, she just assumed that any device with a bright shiny screen worked that way. So one day my wife and I were watching television, I think watching some video on demand, and Anna saw a device with a bright, shiny screen, and it had some icons on it of shows she wanted to watch. And she walked up to it and started poking at the screen to watch what she wanted. And she was so mad when it didn't do what she wanted it to do. And when I think about why we're doing Tizen, it's not just about the devices of today, the phones and the tablets, but it's about all of the devices of the future, the televisions, the cars, and all of these devices that are going to be connected to the internet going forward. Tizen is all about creating an open platform that can bring that world to reality. That's what it's all about. About a year ago, we released Tizen 1.0. Since then, we have improved Tizen quite a lot. The execution speed has gotten much faster, the memory footprint has gotten much smaller, and we have added quite a few exciting new features to Tizen in areas such as the web, the ID, the UX, and the security. Tizen 2's support for W3C HTML5 is the best among all the browsers, scoring 492 out of 500 at html5test.com benchmark site. Tizen 2 also support. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, JD. It was great to hear the updates on the features and the devices that are going to be coming this year. So, of course, in addition to having the Tizen 2.1 platform and SDK, we need an app store. And I'm excited to announce today that the Tizen App Store is open for business. We have the Seller Portal, which if you're an app developer is the place you can go and register and start submitting your apps. It's open at seller.tizenstore.com. You can go and register there today. And this is the place where you'll submit your Tizen applications, not only for the first generation of products coming this year, but also for all of the future Tizen products. So this is the common Tizen store that will support Tizen devices going into the future. So I really encourage you, if you're an app developer, to go register and get ready for that. Of course, in addition to having the store, we need to have apps in the store. And we've been working on bringing in some of the current top apps into the Tizen store. I know when I get a new device, there are certain applications that I just expect to be there. Good morning, everyone. But then, uh, why I'm here is that, uh, as you know, now, platform is ready, and App Store is ready. Also, there are some good, maybe a prize-winning scheme for you, everyone, to have a good application. So, why not have a real commercial product? So, last year, I remember that um, Dokoma had expressed a sincere interest in Tizen, but at the moment we have no product. But now, I'd like to inform that Dokomo will launch our first commercial product in second half of this year, reality. So you'll get 
So, as I said earlier, and as I'm sure you've seen, Pison isn't just about mobile. It's about creating an open platform that can span multiple device categories. And I think one of the most exciting categories is the automotive segment with the in-vehicle infotainment systems. This is the system in your car that gives you the navigation data and entertainment. Maybe you have some rear seat systems. And you know, if you think back traditionally how these systems were built, they were really purpose built. The car maker thought of a usage they wanted to enable. They spent a few years building a system and it did that one usage really well, but it couldn't do anything else. And if you've had this experience, I know I have, as you've gotten smartphones and tablets, you want your car to do some of the same things. You want it to have internet access and maybe some applications. And Tizen provides a great platform, an open platform, a scalable platform, to build these new and exciting and scalable IBI systems. And one of the leaders in taking advantage of this is Jaguar Land Rover. So I'm really happy to have Matt Jones here today from Jaguar Land Rover to tell you more about what they're doing with Tizen for IBI. So Matt? Hello, welcome, thank you. So I'm going to talk to you today, I'm going to take a step back. How many people in the room drive cars? Yeah, it's quite a few. And every time you get into your vehicle, you, you listen to the radio, you listen to the satellite radio, you connect your iPad, your iPod, and you interact with your navigation system. And actually moving forwards, one of the major elements of, an IV, of a vehicle is that IVI system. Now where we are in 2013, we don't really have so many expectations of an IVI system. In reality, what we have is expectations of a connected world. Back in 2011, we asked the customer base of Jaguar Land Rover and other vehicles, what do you want from an IVI system? And they said, we want HD displays, just like the Samsung television I have in my living room. We want improved voice control, like the Siri system or the Nuance engines that I'm used to using on my Apple and Google devices. I want it to be connected. I want telematics. I want to know where my car is, what it's doing at all times, just like I can use Find My iPhone or other applications. They wanted connected navigation so they could get the Urban Spoon applications and the Yelp reviews for the restaurants integrated with their navigation systems. And they wanted an app store. Now we said, an app store? Okay, this is interesting. What do you want from an app store? And I said, um, I want the app store to be like the Android app store and the, the iOS app store, and like the Tizen app store will be shortly. But how many of those apps do you want to use in your vehicle? Well, I don't really know. And here's the, here's the crunch. We said to them then, this was a stupid question with hindsight, but I'm good at stupid questions if you know me. What do you want in 2014? And just like Mark's already alluded to, they didn't know, they didn't have a clue. And we, we backed off to 2014 and we said, what do you want from the next app you buy from the next app store you use? What do you think the next killer app will be? And they had no idea. And this was a really enlightening moment for Jaguar Land Rover and the industry in general, in that we need to concentrate on building a base platform that enables expansion, enables the future innovative ideas from you, the apps development community, to run in vehicle, as well as on mobile device, and as well as on the rest of the internet of things. So our mission from this was to understand how we can do that, how we can help you and others to openly innovate on these platforms. I want to mention that we have a shiny Land Rover, you may have seen it out in the lobby, with a Tizen IVI system in it. So I really encourage you to go check that out and see what's already possible using Tizen IVI in a car today. Unfortunately, we only have one car, so you're not gonna be able to drive one home, um, but it's a great illustration of what you can do with Tizen in, in an automotive setting. So the last section I wanna cover is what's coming next. We've talked about Tizen 2.1 and the ecosystem and the products that will be built on that. We're already at work on Tizen 3.0. Uh, I'm really happy to say that we have the initial code for Tizen 3.0 already out on Tizen.org. So we've started the development. Uh, if you go take a look at the code that's there now, you'll see that we have kind of the core operating system code, the underpinnings of the platform that's in place, 
But this isn't the end state for 3.0, this is really the beginning state for the development of 3.0. And we're planning on carrying that out on Tizen.org. So we'd really love to have you come and participate in that. If you're a platform developer, if you're an open source developer, please come and take a look at the code and start participating and contributing. We have a couple of sessions uh, coming up in the next couple of days in the platform track. And if you look for the ones that are tagged with 3.0 on them, you can find out more details of what's going to be in Tizen 3.0. This is really the platform for our products of next year. Think about that as the rough time frame for Tizen 3.0. So hopefully by now, we've given you a good idea of where Tizen is at today and where we're, where we're going looking forward. We've got a robust ecosystem in place. The App Store is up and ready for business, ready for your submissions. We have an exciting app challenge. Four million dollars in prizes for you to compete, against, to, to compete for if you're an app builder and a great opportunity to get exposure for your applications. And of course we have the Tizen 2.1 release. The platform and the SDK are there, ready to be built into products, ready for you to build your applications against. You heard from NTT Docomo and from Jaguar Land Rover about the great work that they're doing to bring Tizen into products, with real products coming to market starting in the second half of this year in mobile. And then of course I just talked about Tizen 3.0, the platform for next year's products. Initial code has been released, it's there, we'd love to see your contributions and participation in evolving and defining the next iteration of the Tizen platform. Fundamentally, only Tizen makes it possible for you to write an HTML5 application and scale it across a broad range of devices. Mobile devices, cars, televisions, and all of these devices in the future. So I really want to encourage all of you, especially the app developers, go get the Tizen SDK and start creating the great applications and the devices that are going to create the world of tomorrow that my daughter expects today. Thank you very much.